first up is Samantha Bobert, uh, who is uh, Chief Growth Officer at Rockaway X. She's co-organizer of this event, and she will tell you well more about this whole thing. So please, let's give her applause. Hi. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, guys. Um, so yeah, I'm Samantha. Hi, Peter. Um, I'm with Rockaway X. We're so excited that we're all finally here. Um, so I guess stepping back, I joined this company as chief growth officer about 12 weeks ago. And the focus was pretty clear. So it was the commercial, it was connecting us with the big bags, like what are the projects with the cash, where's the money, where are the institutions? So I'm stoked that we decided to go all in, go even bigger on our annual Cosmos developer conference. <laughs> Bit of a joke. Um, <laughs> I have been warned never kick off a conference with a joke, but I feel like Cosmos is a contrarian crew. Um, so I'll tell you more about where we play into this later, why Rockaway is organizing this event for the second year. But for now, I'll say we're not in the event business, so throwing this really is a labor of love. Um, I know many of you are joining us. I see that. It's okay. <laughs> I see many of you are joining us for the second time this year. Um, I'm actually a first timer, but I know I see many familiar faces. That's because so many of you have been instrumental, both in helping me get my bearings in this ecosystem and helping us put this program together. When I asked many of you why you're making the trip, um, you know, why, what makes a program great, what makes a conference memorable, the thing I keep hearing is it's just always about the people. Um, it's about seeing old friends, making new ones. So with that, I have no doubt that there will be many friendships forged this weekend, but I also see other sparks flying. I believe that at least two people will find a co-founder in this room. I think at least 10, 15 projects are going to ink new partnerships. Um, and I believe that an idea sparked here will lead to the next Cosmos unicorn. So, instead of you having to hear me speak anymore, I'd rather us start making those connections. So, we're going to do a little exercise. I'm going to ask all of you to turn to your right, or if you don't have a right, just find someone or a group of people, okay? And we're going to jump into conversation for a few minutes. Um, you're going to ask, but, okay, let's, let's hold it for one sec. Wow, I was going to actually apologize and say, I think this might be an introverted group, so you might hate me, but you guys are like off to the races. You're going to ask each other two questions. You'll have five minutes. Here they are. What do you hope to gain from this community and experience, and what do you hope to contribute? Let's fire away. Okay. All right, guys, quick time's up. If you, if you can turn the other way, that was kind of half the five minutes, and find a new partner, and we're going to do it one more time. All right? You, Peter, turn in back. That's a wrap. Let's come back. Um, I have to say, I'm pretty surprised at how chatty Sometimes people are a little clammy after that, and they're like looking around like, oh, when is this over? I feel like I could have left and never returned. <laughs> and we would have been off to the races. OK, so what about Rockaway? Why are we here, and what do we think we're contributing? Simply put, we're a crypto company that both invests in projects and builds stuff in this space. So on the one side of the house, we have an investment arm. We've been backing early stage Web3 crypto digital asset projects since 2018. We also run a crypto DeFi yield fund. So this strategy does a bunch of things like loans to market makers, stablecoin ARB, but perhaps the most relevant to this group is that it deploys liquidity directly into DeFi protocols. On the other side of the house, we have the stuff we build. Um, first, we've got, we've got a big team working on this, so over 30 engineers across them scientists, we have researchers, some infrastructure specialists, um, and that's across both labs and infrastructure. From my perspective, being an investor and operator is a kind of cool dynamic. 
um, because it means that when we get into something, we go really deep, right? We're thinking about what can we contribute across both these areas? What unique perspective can we bring? And that's really what happened with Cosmos. So really quickly, what did get us excited here? Um, I think it's pretty simple. The tech, governance, the people. By people, I mean I think that this community has always attracted developers, but that it has an edge in doing so because it's uniquely accessible. Um, and finally, the vibes, the community. Um, I've had the first-hand experience that while you're a really decentralized crew, um, truly all over the world, truly known for being somewhat, I think, shadowy or hard to reach or hard to get in one place, I keep hearing, really warm, really inviting, and really excited when you do congregate. So with these strengths, we saw huge potential as both investors and operators. Um, I'm going to drill through this really quick, kind of the the presentation equivalent of eating your vegetables. What have we done? Um, invest. <laughs> OK, this, this is a big fan. <laughs> um, I'll give you an autograph later. Uh, we were early backers of a couple projects here that are in this room, and we continue to look daily for investment opportunities, both venture and liquidity. On the build side, so this team for us, because sometimes I think the word labs is used everywhere a lot. To us, this is really a venture studio that aims to kill, to like fill, not kill, key kind of infrastructure, commercial, ecosystem, product gaps across the space. A couple of the projects they've already worked on, which are listed here, already intersect this ecosystem. Um, and I know many of you in this room have been involved with them in different ways, either appearing on our podcast, some foundations in this room are using smart delegation, Maya, no one in this room is working with because this is our latest, like, out of stealth about a week ago, um, but hopefully you will. And finally, our infrastructure arm runs validators on leading networks and including most Cosmos chains that we support. Okay, so what else might you want to know about us? Um, before you kind of get into the weeds of what someone does, you usually want to know what they think. We have a lot of views. We have a lot of hot takes. We have a lot of... We're also kind of Eastern, not me, but, but everyone else at this company is an Eastern European, Central European, strong-minded person. We have a lot of views, um, but a few are most strongly held, and those are the ones that dictate how we spend our time, where we focus resource, and really what we want to contribute to this community, right? So we're always anchoring behind these. Um, really quickly, can my colleagues here raise their hands? Okay. Good, I'm, I'm glad they're here up and early. So if you see these people, first of all, ask them for directions because they've been whipped into shape to know their way around. Um, but second, they will talk to you all day and into the night about what we think about these three things. Because this is where we are viewing ourselves as taking a stand. So decentralization, security, and privacy. For decentralization, this is probably our biggie. This is like, this, this, this would be on the wall if we had these at the office, would be, it boils down to this. We believe the chains are not as decentralized as people think. We think that's a problem, not purely ideologically, but because it means they're not resilient. And if they're not resilient, then we don't see them intersecting or underpinning use cases that really intersect our lives. Our labs team is building products and tooling to shed light on this, so to help chains understand how decentralized they are, but ultimately to empower projects themselves, users and investors to do something about it. That is Observatory. That was our first platform. It shows a chain's true level of decentralization and the performance of its infrastructure partners. Um, before, before my colleague Martin, who runs labs, got started, this was actually a really hard for Cosmos. Um, because of the node architecture, it was tricky to identify where validators were located. We cracked this by building what I believe is a first-of-its-kind system. So we deployed sensors via Tendermint node to more than 10 data centers globally. And now we are able, for every Cosmos change, I believe, to identify where validators are, so ISPs, um, and ultimately drill into the performance, so the uptime, the governance participation of those validators. On top of that, we built a product called Smart Delegation Program that helps foundations to really automate their rewards, so take kind of those like clunky Excel sheets that might have existed at one moment in time around launch and make them real time so that they're adjusting to validators' performance as they go and ultimately to promote decentralization. What this all boils down to is our big belief here. We believe that in the months and years ahead, 
better visibility, data, and tooling is going to really mean that there's no excuse for low decentralization, which is a fancy way of saying we're all going to become more decentralized. Then security. Um, sometimes we, we feel, we, my, my colleagues, who have educated me on this believe that people can forget that blockchains really do come down to real world things, right? There is a presence. Um, and that the infrastructure isn't as professional as it can be. We're trying to practice what we preach, so our operations use bare metal. No cloud services, so we use our own servers. Like, we don't, we don't say the word Hetzner. Um, our facilities are independently located. Uh, access is only granted to like the most trusted team members. I'm not one of them, so don't ask me <laughs> where they are, um, but yeah. And finally, privacy. I'll keep this one pretty quick. We believe that privacy preserving technology is fast upon us and that it's going to intersect not just other, other technology areas, but every ecosystem in this space, including Cosmos. Um, I'll call out Maya, as I said, this is a project that, that is seeing the light of day for the first time for us. It's developing FPGAs for ZKs. What that that's a lot of letters. Um, what it boils down to is helping to make these proofs a lot faster, which is really the key thing to then turn ZK into stuff that we actually experience, right? So real world use. So why are we here? Like you, we are believers in this space, but we approach it, we have a lot of questions, right? There's things we ask. We're pretty sure about the potential, but we have questions, we have uncertainties. Sometimes we wonder what's next in a different area. And that was our motivation in hosting this event. It really came down to, what if we could curate the sort of program that we would want to attend, that would get our kind of questions answered, where we could talk into the day and night about those uncertainties and the big questions. So what are they? Um, simple tech liquidity users. I'll try to drill through this. For the tech, it really comes down to us for this. What is the most important unlock, kind of what what are those enablers for the next use cases for adoption? Are we working on the right things? What's been exciting, okay, that, unless I'm losing my eyesight, that's a lot of blur. It's showing developer activity by chain. Um, the main thing is that's Cosmos and there's, there's green. So we've done well in the last 30 days, green Cosmos. Um, but that it's held strong. So not only is that encouraging for us as investors builders, but actually in throwing this conference that we thought developers are gonna show up, they're excited here. So then the question becomes, what are we all working on? Are we building the right things? What parts of the stack can we focus our energy on need to be improved? Um, so bringing this back to the agenda, where do, we, where do we think these answers are going to come? We have a great lineup digging into this. It's tech developments. It's also on the website, the agenda, but if, just orienting us in a different way. We have a lot on the roadmap ahead and on what's been built in the last 12 months. Um, right after I get off this stage, Yaz from Celestia is going to be talking about roll-ups developers. We have Peter and Bo from Polymer about IBC, and it, it goes on. Then the liquidity. I guess, to put this most simply, we're pretty cognizant. You know, good tech is one thing, even good DeFi apps is one thing, but you need the liquidity to power it all. Where is this system going to be able to best others in attracting? We know it's been pretty tough for protocols everywhere, right? Every ecosystem is in this kind of fight to attract liquidity providers and, and kind of that oil. Um, so we know it's a challenge for this one. You can join us at these talks over today and tomorrow where we are gonna go into all aspects of attracting liquidity and DeFi right now and what's ahead. And finally, the why we're here. I think this is probably the, the biggest, right? Um, those others are kind of the building blocks, but it really comes down to where is the usage? Where are the real life projects, the users? You know, where, where are the new experiences that we're enabling? Where are people doing things that they weren't able to do before because of the power of this stack? Um, yeah, where are the users that are excited, that, that are paying, dare I say? Um, Again, another table that's, that's impossible to read unless, unless you, I don't know, have GPTI. But I'll put it simply, this is, I think this is daily active addresses and we think these Cosmos apps can be a lot higher by this time next year. So where are we gonna drill into users, user experience, apps, 
that, are, that have real world usage. Again, I think we've got a pretty great lineup across talks, panels, workshops. Okay, I have the stage now, so of course I'm gonna highlight my colleagues. Um, if you wanna show your host some love, you can do that by turning out to our talks. <laughs> it's probably our number one ask for you. Um, I talked a little about observatory and SDP because that's, that's kind of our biggest contribution so far on the build side to this space, but Martin, my colleague who runs labs, is going to do both a talk about it, he's gonna talk about the roadmap, and he's gonna be hosting demos if you'd like to play around and see if you're, if you're questioning, has this really worked? Has toggling those rewards to promote decentralization actually done it? I'll give you a clue, I think it has, but he'll go into that in these demos. Um, and finally, on the last day, um, our fabulous founder and CEO is going to do a pretty creative session, really pushing us to the boundaries of like, so what, we've talked about things for days, where are the use cases? Um, he's got, He's got hot takes on this, but he wants you all to come thinking about what you've, what you've talked about, I guess. <laughs> um, finally, workshops. We wanted a workshop lineup that leaves us all pretty damn eager to, to build a decentralized, user-enticing, um, engaging application. We think we have a solid part of the stack covered with these, these workshops. They're a mix of hands-on training, product demos, and AMAs. I guess for most of them, it's like bring two things, computers, tough questions, ready to get involved. Um, ex we have a steak bar outside. Um, I'd say extra strong drinks to people who attend at least two or three of these. Um, in terms of how you can register, because some of them are capped, I think when you leave here around the walls, there's a QR code. It says sign up for workshops. It's really easy. Save your space. Um, I think you already got the map covered. I guess my plug would just be try to hit the lounges. Also, I know everyone, if you need, a, if you need to post up with your computer, if you need to take a call, you should be able to go to one of these lounges and do that. Finally, our demo day. Um, we've actually decided in the lead up to this to keep three spots open that we'll allocate at the end of this day because we thought you might be fired up sitting here and seeing about other people doing demos and think, I should show mine. So you have until 7 p.m. to apply to show off your work. It's really easy, again, really easy by phone application. I'll leave this here for a sec, um, but if you don't want it on your phone right now, you can also go to our website and it's pretty clear where you can apply. We've got our judges ready. They, they love more applications. Um, and finally, a little shout out here, every conference kind of has its sprints. Um, one part of our agenda that needed some love and attention was the demo day to get it into ultra good shape. Um, and we're really fortunate that Jennifer joined us. This woman has organized about 100 hacker houses and demo days, and so she's done, she's created a really innovative way, I guess, of engaging people who are there. So even if you're not gonna demo, show up, and you'll be kind of prompted to react a sort of reality cool experience. Okay, this last one's a biggie for me. I wanna thank my amazing colleague. He is the driving force of this conference for a second year running, Tomas. He's amazing, he's our director of events. Oh wait, Ooh, I think I missed that, I forgot. He's actually our chief infrastructure officer and does this totally on the side of his day job, which is being one of the best blockchain engineers in the world, but this man has architected everything here. So if you see him, please give him a, like a huge a hug, because he's also a good, a good guy for a hug. Um, give him something, finally. Yeah, I think we already thanked our sponsors, but maybe we'll, we'll all add something here is, you know, they're not kind of just sponsors of this event or folks that have contributed financially. They're all doing really interesting things in this space. So, you know, take advantage of their presence. They have booths, they have lounges, they have a lot of people here. Ask them what they're working on and see how they can be supportive of you. Okay, well, thank you. And with that, I'll get off and let us get started. Thank you.